What if everything that was said in that video is true? What do you think? What does that mean for me and you? Hmm, introspection. You know, oftentimes, we don't think of ourselves in the light that we were created. And so I believe one of the things that we all collectively hope to accomplish, and hopefully this still works, that we hope to accomplish here at this conference is to have each one of us embrace our opportunities and actually take responsibility for the opportunities that we have. Uh, we live in the wealthiest nation on the planet. We have some of the greatest resources at our disposal that most other nations don't just have. Like, how many of us took a shower this morning or last night or this week? Two people, okay? That explains why folks are so spread out. The rest of y'all who didn't raise your hand are the cause. And I'm not sure it was traffic. It was these folks who chose not to take a shower. We're gonna talk about that later. We have a speaker coming up to address that, so don't leave. You know, but oftentimes, how many of us have heard about the issues happening in this region? One of the biggest issues, it's, it's national, but because we're here in the Washington District of Columbia region, we hear it, it's like local to us. You know, the White House is right over there, the Capitol's right over there. What's the big issue that everybody's concerned about? The government is what? Shut down. That makes a difference in our lives, right? That matters. What does that affect? There's this E word that we talk about. The economy, it affects the economy, right? So if they don't get their act together, things might not go well in the economy, right? Yes? That's true? Is it? So if the government doesn't get their act together, they can't get along, they're doing this you know, political polarization, political theater back and forth. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. If you would do this, this would... And all of that back and forth, right? If they don't get that together, then the rest of us... Mm, there's some terms that you probably can think of or that you've heard in the media, but it just may not work out good, right? Is that true? What if that's not true? Now, we're going to talk about some tools that I'd like to share with you. Here's some important things. If you can grasp just a few simple concepts that I'm gonna share. These aren't concepts that were developed by Darrell Davis, a young man from the south side of Chicago who migrated to Washington, D.C. as a student at Howard University, who was, like our conference organizer mentioned, at one point in life, broke and homeless and all of that stuff in pursuit of a dream. Uh, who, who've met some mentors that shared concepts that have been shared and espoused over history. Some of the greatest teachers throughout history have shared these same concepts. So I'm not the inventor nor the creator. I've just packaged it in a way that I hope is helpful to you. But these concepts have made a difference in the lives that we seem to look to and admire. You know, how many of us admire Oprah Winfrey? and her accomplishments and her achievements. Yes, can you give a hand for Oprah? Okay. How many of us admire Bill Gates and his accomplishments and his achievements? The late, great Steve Jobs and his accomplishments and his achievements. Warren Buffett, how about that? Warren Buffett? Okay, and then there are people in the faith community that we, some, some of us may admire, like mm, Bishop T.D. Jakes. How many of us admire his work? So it, the, the list goes on and on. How about our president, President Barack Obama? He's accomplishing things, yes? So the list goes on and on of people we admire. But how many of us know this? That you, you, and you, and all of you, and me, we are creators. How many of us know that? Yeah, clap for yourself. That's good. She's ready to clap. We, we are creators. And so I want to challenge you over these next few minutes. We're going to challenge some of the ideas that we have. We're going to challenge some of the ideas that the media and the talking heads espouse and inundate us with all of these messages with the 24-hour news cycle that's constantly telling you how bad things are and how bad your life is. And if they don't get it right, then your life is this. Hold on. Wait a minute. 
Now, are we going to allow someone else to write the script for our lives? Are we going to allow someone else to write the script for our lives? Excellent. How many of us would choose to take that pen and take that blank page of today and write our own script? How many of you want to join me with that? Okay. About 75% of you. So the other 25% of the 25% that were not alive when we started. Is that it? Okay, we're gonna, again, on occasion you have to turn to your neighbor, you have to nudge them, resuscitate them, tell them to go out, get some oxygen or something. Because that's what we wanna do. We wanna take responsibility for our own lives. And understand this, what's happening on the hill, what happens on Wall Street, does it make a difference? Yes. Does it matter? Yes. Is it important? Yes. But it is not the quintessential determining factor of your life, your existence, your future, your lineage, your legacy. That's not determined by the people that are voted in and out of office. That's not even determined by the people who may be pulling the strings of the people who are voted in and out of office. Some people call that the, mil the military industrial complex. Other people call it the industrial bankers who are running everything, who financed everything, who we're in debt to and we are basically servants to. Some people think. It's not even determined by that. Guess where it's determined? Right here. Right here. And right here. With what we decide to do and have the will to carry out. So that's going to be the basis of our discussion. And noted what I called it. I called it a discussion. Yes. So nobody gets to take a nap in the next 30 minutes or so. Is that OK? Great. You all can take a nap at the end of the conference. Because they've got accommodations right here. You're going to be so full and overwhelmed and overjoyed. You're just not going to want to drive because you just can't even think about how you're going to apply all of the wonderful nuggets of insight and wisdom and knowledge that you gained here today. Speaking of that, knowledge. What's that famous statement? Somebody help me out. There's about knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Awesome. How many of us believe that? Okay. 30%, 40%. You're excited about that? Okay. All right. I'm going to challenge you on that. Because over the next 30 or 40 minutes, we're going to challenge our thoughts and our ideas about a number of things, a number of myths. Because how many of us would choose to live our lives according to a myth that's not true, find out at the end of our lives that we never fulfilled the purpose for which we were placed here, and then have that ever eternal despair of, wow, I could have done more. I should have done more. I was created to do more. How many of us want that story? Good, no hands. How many of us want to hear at the end of our lives, hey, you did good. You did good with the resources you had. How many of us want that story? Awesome. That's the, the bulk of us. Okay, so clap your hands. Good. I'm going to commend you all on that. So, knowledge is partial power. Who can help me with what's really power? Applied knowledge. Because how many of us would be better off if we had knowledge of something? You know, there's some things in my world of finance that they say is a no, no, not good, bad, boo, don't do that. And it's this thing called insider trading. How many of us ever heard of Martha Stewart? Know her? How many of us know Martha Stewart had a little hiccup at some point where they said she did some insider trading? What happened? She went to jail. They were like, boo, no, you can't do that. Go to jail, don't pass go, don't collect $200, right? She was probably still collecting more than $200, but you all get my point. Okay, making sure y'all are awake. How many of us heard of the Dallas Mavericks NBA franchise? Their owner, young, exuberant owner, Mark Cuban, heard of him? Anybody heard that he got a little challenge going on right now? You haven't heard? Oh, yeah, you've heard? Federal courts are like, hey, man, a few years ago, Insider trading, you found out some stuff, you applied some money to it, you made some money from it, you're not supposed to do that. Boo, bad. I don't know what they're going to do, but probably trying to smack them on the wrist, whatever. You all follow me? So knowledge, if he had the knowledge of something and didn't act on it, would he be in federal court right now? If Martha Stewart had knowledge of whatever she found out about and didn't act on it, would she have gone to jail? So you won't be penalized for having knowledge of something. It's if you act on it, right? So how are we going to be rewarded for knowledge? You're rewarded. You have all that knowledge. And you did nothing with it. 
Does that make sense? So how many of us know that the creator, the orchestrator of this whole system of which we are a part, call it the world, the universe, the, you know, the galaxy, all of that good stuff, there's order to that, right? There's intelligence to that, right? Right? Things didn't just come out of chaos into order, I don't think. There seems to be some order to it. So if it doesn't make sense that we're not penalized for having knowledge of something like insider trading and don't act on it, then we can't be rewarded for knowledge. We are rewarded for gaining knowledge and then applying that knowledge. Because you're no better off if you're taught how to read and you choose not to read. You're no better off if you're taught how to fly a plane. There's a group of people whose lives are dependent on that plane leaving one location, getting to a next. You're the only person in the group eligible, qualified, capable of flying the plane, but you choose not to. You have the knowledge. Who is that gonna help? Who's it gonna serve? Everybody perishes, right? That's not a reward. How many of us have ever heard of processional caterpillars? Ever heard of them? Young man here has. This is a group of caterpillars that if we were to take this, this flower pot right here and sit it here, and it's full of food that they love, they like to eat it, and you place the caterpillars around that pot, they would singly follow each other in procession around that pot with never approaching the food in the center because they just blindly follow the caterpillar in front. And they'll crawl around until they're out of energy, out of life, and die when all that they needed to sustain themselves was right there in the middle. How many of us have heard of the idea of the sheep being led to the slaughter? You know, the challenge with sheep is that they're focused on the little hips of the sheep in front of them. So if one little sheep is walking towards the edge, the sheep behind him isn't looking ahead of him to the edge like we do when we're in traffic, like, hey, why are you going so slow? There's nothing going on up there. You're rubbernecking. Come move out of my way. Oh, you all don't do that. Oh, that's, that's road rage. Oh, right. Those are the people who are not here. They did that. But you, you've heard of people who do that, right? They're looking at him like, what is this? Especially when you go to New York. We're not like that, but sheep, they're looking at the hips of the little sheep in front of them. So if one sheep's going to walk off the head, he didn't even hear him scream. They just walked off the head. The next one just walked off the head like, hey, where'd he go? How many of us are sheep? Good. Well, some of us may have been sheep in the past, but today we're choosing to liberate ourselves. So that's, that's the goal of this few minutes of talk, interaction and discussion. We're gonna call it a communication session. And the goal of this conference is to help us to hone our skills so that we can create what we are placed here to create. You know, there's a, some ancient text, sometimes it's referred to as the Bible, Holy Scriptures, passages, whatever you wanna call it, that may be fitting for you, most of you probably do refer to the Bible. But there's a place where it says we were created in the image and in the likeness of God, the infinite intelligence that put this all together, right? So if you're in the image and in the likeness of, and he created all of this, and then there's another phrase that says, and then he gave assignments, right? Then there was something about dominion, take dominion. What does that mean, take dominion? Take charge. So, you know, if there's a nice big castle that maybe this young man right here lives in that I know, he has probably a couple of them. But let's say you have a big castle and you say, invite everyone over and say, hey, I'm going to give you dominion over my castle while I'm in Europe. Enjoy. What does that mean? That means at the end of this conference, you invite all of us over. You've got food. You've got nice beverage that is pure without any, you know, no, anti no stimulations that we don't need. You know what I mean? Good stuff, fresh, clean water. And we can enjoy ourselves because you invited us and you have permission, correct? Now, when he comes back, you probably have to hand over the keys, right? But ours is that my gifts are without, what? Repentance, right? You don't have to, you know, I'm not taking it back. So if we're created in the image and likeness, that means we're creators too, correct? And if it's not gonna be taken back from us, then we have a responsibility to execute on that dominion. 